Hello students and welcome to another video lecture from Architects Academy. Today we are going to discuss about uh, trapezoidal footing and what is the principle behind the trape trapezoidal footing. So you are already aware that uh, any uh, in a frame structure the loads are carried by the columns and then from the columns they are passed on to the foundation which is in the form of a footing. So what you are seeing here is a plan of a trapezoidal footing, a plan showing the reinforcement of the trapezoidal footing and a section through the trapezoidal footing. Let us try to see these sketches so that we understand what is meant by the trapezoidal footing. So first let us zoom into this particular part of the um, sketch and what you can see here is at the bottom you can see the uh, lines which are showing the hard strata on which the PCC bed has been constructed. The PCC bed is constructed to give a hard and level surface for casting the footing which is going to come on top. So this is going to be the footing which is going to uh, which is on top of the PCC bed. The footing itself is consisting of two parts. The first part is the rectangular portion of the footing which I will uh, try to indicate here by a box. So as you can see here, this is the rectangular part of the footing and the upper part of the footing which you can see here is going to be the trapezoidal part which I will indicate like this now. So this is going to be the trapezoidal part of the footing. Now if you see uh, in this particular sketch what happens is that uh, when we are talking about uh, a trapezoidal footing or any column footing, what you will realize is that when the load acts on a footing, what happens is because of the load, the footing has a tendency to bend. Now as, it, as a result of this bending, what happens is at the bottom of the footing, there is tension created and at the top of the footing, there is compression created. So as you know, the principle of RCC is such that wherever there is a tension, you will have the steel reinforcement. So what you can see here is that in the part or the zone where the tension exists, you will have the main reinforcement in the footing. The main reinforcement is in this particular direction which is shown as the XX direction and also at right angles to this direction which is shown by these dots here the red dots which is at right angles to this blue line which has been shown here. So in fact this forms a sort of a mesh at the bottom of the footing which we can see in the plan. If we go to the plan we'll see that this mesh has been formed with the reinforcement bars in the horizontal direction and again the reinforcement bars, bars in this uh, YY direction again. Now what happens as a result of this uh, mesh which is created at the bottom is that the load which is coming from the column is going to get distributed evenly over the footing. The next part of the footing as you can see is the shape of this footing. So let us try to understand why this has got a trapezoidal shape. So if you look at this particular footing you will see that this particular part which is indicated by a triangle which I will try to draw here uh, is this portion. This part of the footing actually does not take part in carrying any load and therefore it is uh, as, as far as structure is concerned it is of no use. Therefore this part of the uh, we don't cast this part of the footing to save on the concrete. That's why the shape is a trapezoidal shape. As you can see this trapezoidal shape is has a slope in all directions if you look at the plan and the upper part of the footing here in this case is the trapezoidal part of the footing. Now if we go and zoom into this particular trapezoidal part what we will see is at the top of this trapezoidal part there is a sort of a horizontal ledge which is created which is about 75 mm in width. The purpose of creating this ledge is that when the column is to be constructed, the formwork for the column is going to be erected and is going to be supported by this ledge. 
So this ledge is used to support the column form work. Now, uh, this same thing you can see in the plan. So if we zoom into the plan here, what we'll see is this ledge formed on all four sides of the column, which is going to support the column form work. Now let us try to see some other features of the footing in the sense that this is the column which is coming and resting on the footing. This is the main reinforcement of the column which you can see in the uh, uh, which is indicated by the blue lines here and that is the main reinforcement which is going to go and rest on this mesh here at the bottom. The green colored reinforcement which we see here I will try to indicate this uh, with the help of a line here. So as you can see this these lines here indicate the uh, links which are going to connect the main reinforcement of the column. The purpose of the links is to uh, provide uh, the resistance against shear force. So the links are provided at a minimum distance of or maximum distance rather of 150. So this is something to note. What you will see here is that the uh, reinfo uh, the distance between the spacing between the uh, links is maximum 150. So they can be closer together but they cannot be uh, wider than 150. Now let us try to see um, what happens when uh, this particular thing is seen in the plan. So in the plan what you are going to see is again the reinforcement inside the column these this uh, black dots are showing the reinforcement inside the column the green outline here the ring which is formed here is the links which are provided to hold the column reinforcement and to provide as shear resistance uh, i hope that uh, now so far the the footing uh, the trapezoidal footing is clear so if you have any doubts about this you can contact me on my email address which is going to be shown at the end of this video and if you like this video please subscribe to our channel at architects academy thank you